Morning everybody. This is going to be an epic journey. The biggest adventure that we've done yet. On the 1st of October, five weeks away, as a matter of fact, five weeks time, on the 1st of October, we embark on the Southern Upland Way. It's going to be tough, we're carrying full pack, we're going to be totally self-sufficient. This is just my map case for the map that we've got that we're going to be taking with us. And what we've got to do is show you our planned route. We're going to do our 14 days at 15 miles a day. And what I've done is on the map here, I've went and put resupply points where we're going to be roughly camping because we might work on a mile or do a mile less, but we've got to do, um, sorry, we've got to do a minimum of 15 mile to finish it in 14 days, which is well doable, carrying full kit. It starts at Port Patrick and ends up at Coburn's Path. I think it's about 111, 212 miles, 111, it's 212 miles so it is, over 14 days. And the people that's going are the same people that went on the West Highland Way journey this year. There's got to be myself, the Denson Ranger. There's got to be Kenny Keep Fit. Julie Little. Jed, Gerard Taylor. And Eddie, Scotswell Camper. So looking forward to it. We've got new gear. So me and Kenny is going to be doing a kit review and got to show you exactly what we're going to be taking on this journey what we're going to be carrying in my rucksacks. It'll be a base week and then of course we'll add food after. Now the way I've got this planned, because it's a lot more remote than the West Highland Way, so what I've got planned here is we can only have to carry food for about two days, then we can resupply. Two days, then we can resupply, the way we've got this done here. There is a couple of bits which I'll show you in the map where we're going to have to hide a cache because there's just nothing round about to resupply. So me and Ken, there's only two points where we have to do that. One of them's at Glen Troll, and then one of them's at the Tappets and Mary's Loch, where we're gonna have to hide a cache to last us, to put food in there to last us for two days, and wine. <laughs> but it's gonna be an epic journey. So let me show you how we planned our Southern Upland Way journey. Right, day one starts off at Port Patrick, okay. Now this map is the Southern Upland Way and it's a 1 in 40, I think the scale is 1 in 40. So it's not got great contour detail but it's good enough and we'll be using our phones for navigation as well. So there's the first leg on day one. We'll travel up. Pastor and Ra, now here, we can resupply here, Castle Kennedy, okay, we can resupply in day one at Castle Kennedy, stock up for the camp for one to two days, okay, there's toilets there as well, there's a spa there, then we're going to be getting by Passing by Castle Kennedy in the Black Lock. And then this is the 15 mile mark. Now this is just approximate where we're going to be camping. So it is, but that's our first 15 mile marker there past Castle Kennedy. So we're going to be camping roughly just past Castle Kennedy on day one. That's the first 15 mile. Now day two, of course we're going to be carrying on. That'd be some beautiful scenery, so there is. Now day two, the next 15 mile brings you through some wooded area and we're going to be ca camping just past Loch Derry somewhere. So it's not going to be exact, but day two, the second 15 miler has got to be camping just past Loch Derry. Okay. Now for day three, let me find it here. Day three is going to continue on. Day 
Day three has got to be heading around about Loch Tool area. There's Loch Tool here. In Glen Tool, there's Loch Tool. Now we're going to be camping roughly round about the old cauldron campsites here. But we'll probably walk on a wee bit. And uh, we're going to bury a cache somewhere round about here. Because this is where we're going to have to put a cache for the next two days. For day three and four. Okay, so we'll hide a cache somewhere in this area here. You won't know where it is. But we're going to be camping round about Loch Tool on day three. So well, that's got to be absolutely brilliant. Very looking forward to that. That's another 15 miler. Right, day four. We've got to be heading past Loch Tool. Up past Loch D. And of course the white lagged both is up somewhere around about here, so it is. But we'll be passing by that, we're not camping there. And we've got to continue on. Past Clatter and Shaw's Loch, which is a good deer centre here, and a wee cafe, so we might get a big teat there actually. And then we've got to head up. For day four. And here's day four here. And we're going to be camping round about this area here, which you can see at the end of the woods. We're passing by Drumbuie Hill, and we're going to be camping out in the wilds, right by the edge of a forest, in the Galloway Forest area. That's day four. That's 15 mile marker there. The next day, day five, we're heading over, and here we've got a resupply here. And day five, it's in John's town of Dulry. Day five, we're going to be passing by St. John's Town of Dalry. Now, it's got some good eateries in there, so we will be stopping for something to eat there. Okay? But it's got shops and everything. So, we resupply St. John's Town of Dalry. Heading on. Right the way up. Right the way up here. Sorry for the map work. I'm just opening it up as I go. Day five, we're going to be camping just below... The hill Benbrack in this area here. So it's got to be forested, so it is out in the Galloway Forest. It's got to be splendid. That's got to be a cracking camp, that. Right, from there, that's 15 mile mark. Now, for there, day six, we're going to be heading through some beautiful scenery. Absolutely stunning. And then for day six, we're going to come across the map here. We're going to be camping and resupplying at Sanka, okay? There's some good chippies in Sanka, so of course we're going to be getting a, a chippy, so we will. And I think Mary's coming to meet us there, so she is, so that's got to be great. And possibly St. Clair as well. So that this is going to be our first campsite on day six that we're going to reach, so we'll get some showers and that there. If we, <coughs> if we need to recharge anything, we'll be doing that on day six. So it's going to be six days. Five days of well camping, and on the sixth day, we're going to get to Sanka. And we'll stay at a caravan site there, and we'll resupply there, so we will for two days. Okay. Day seven. Now, you can see we're going to be walking through some beautiful scenery. At this point here, halfway, you can take a high route, or you can take the alternative route. It depends on the weather, because they say that this part here can be quite treacherous. You can with the path, if it's slippy, because it's quite steep. So, we'll decide on the day which route we're going to take, okay? So day seven, we're going to be coming through some beautiful valleys and all that, and we'll be camping out in the wilderness on day seven. I'm just trying to see some of the areas I'd like to see here. That's roughly about the area there on day seven where we're going to be camping. 15 mile marker again. Now, we'll, we will have resupplied for Sanka, so that'll last us for day seven. Then on day eight, let's turn the map over. On day eight, we can resupply. On day eight, we can resupply because we're heading to Betuk and there's a campsite at Betuk. So day six, we'll hit a campsite at Sanka. 
Day 7 we're well camping, day 8 we'll be hitting Betuk. So we can resupply and camp at Betuk, which is going to be great. So we can recharge our batteries there. Then that's the next 15 mile marker. Then the next day, for day 9, we're going to be heading through some beautiful scenery. Now we'll be starting to be heading into kind of some tough terrain up for here, I think, doing about day 9 as we're heading towards some boggy area eventually so it is between there and the over the hills between Sanka and One Lockheed is the kind of toughest part I think because it's half boggy but anyway doesn't matter day 8 and then for day 9 day 9 we're going to be coming up we're going to be camping up in the hills in the valley I'll just let you see there Day 9, so we'll resupply at Betuk, and day 9 we'll be carrying our food with us and we'll be camping out in a sort of valley area next to a forest and there's always rivers round about where we can get water so water is not going to be a problem because we'll be carrying water filters Right, day 10 Day 10, we're heading up past St Mary's Loch Now in this area here in day 10 we're going to have to hide a cache to resupply us for 2 days Day 10, as I say, we're passing by St Mary's Loch. We're going to be hiding a cache run about here, this area here, because it's easy accessible for me and Kenny to get the car up and then hide a cache here. Then we're going to carry on, not too far, to our campsite, and we're going to be camping on day 10 in the hills again. So we are. And you can see there's going to be some steep terrain run about. We've got some, start, starting to get some climbs in here, so we are. So... We've got food for two days, and then day 10 we're camping out in the wilderness again. Right, day 11. Day 11, it's got to be Gala Shields. So we'll hit Gala Shields, we can resupply, there's chippies there and everything. We can get showers, absolutely fantastic. Campsite there. Resupply in Melrose. So day 11, we're going to be camping out about Gala Shields, which is great. And we'll resupply... Meldos. Absolutely fantastic. Gala Shields heading along Melrose. So that's the camp spot. We'll resupply at Melrose for two days. Day 12. We're lucky again. Day 12, we're hitting another campsite. Camp or well camp. It's up to us. Resupply on day 12, which is fantastic. At Lauder. Now what we'll probably do here is me and Kenny can this area now so we do. So we'll resupply at Lauder, get a bite tea, cafe and all that. Now there is a campsite here and everything but there's a cracking wee campsite outside Lauder. Right next to a wee river and a bridge. Me and Kenny's camped there before and I think that's where we'll head to camp rather than a campsite. But we'll decide that way a group. But that's day 12, the next 15 miles. So it is a bit of plenty of food. If you do get on the campsite, you can get a shower and everything, but there is a crack in the campsite just outside Lauder. We're going to be heading through some lovely scenery, so we are. Day 13, we're going to be camping out in the middle of nowhere. You can just see that. Long for Marcus, round about that area there. Day 13, as I say, we'll resupply at Lauder and we'll carry food with us. And we'll be camping out just past Long for Marcus. Probably pronouncing that wrong. Day 13, and on the last day, which we'll be making the push for Coburn's path. Day 14 is a 17 miler. Unless we do extra in some of our past journeys. Now day 14 we've got a Coburn's Path and there's a shop in Coburn's Path. And that's where we're going to be finishing. Okay, here's the end here at Coburn's Path. Day 14. So that is our Southern Upland Way plan. Now there is other plans that I've seen people put up where they can hit the bothies and that. Now... If we go into Glen Tool and we want to walk an extra four mile, then we can hit White Lagan Bothy, but that's entirely up to us. Depends how we feel in the day. 
but our journey is 15, a minimum of 15 miles a day, and you will complete it in 14 days, that's 212 miles. The last day is a 17 miler. And what we'll do is when we get there, we've got a choice of just camping there or heading straight back to Port Patrick to pick up a car that's got to be left there. And we'll get, we'll get, when we get back there, we've got to be camping there on the Saturday night back at Port Patrick when we finish and have a wee celebration because there's a nice restaurant there at a campsite that we've got to be staying at. That is our Southern Upland Way plan. We can resupply every two days with this plan. Apart from when we get to a Glen Tool. We're going to have to hide a cache there to last for two days. And then we're going to have to hide a cache at the top of St Mary's Loch to last us two days for food. So you only have to carry food with this plan for two days. Uh, we'll, we'll, keep, we'll keep the base weight of our packs between 14 and 16 kilograms. I would imagine 16 kilograms because we're taking a little bit more this time. We've got some new kit, new sleeping bag. We're taking a tap. We'll show you our system that we're going to be using. The taps are the DD Super Light taps, which weigh about 490 grams, but they're 3 meters by 3 meters, and they're going to be a game changer. I've also got a solar shower. I might take it, I might not, I'll see, but uh, it's a good one. I'll let you see that, so. But we're looking forward to taking you along the journey with us. Now we're going to be documenting it well, really well, because there's not that many good films of the Southern Upland Way. There is a couple of scenes, but we're going to really make a good documentation of our journey and show you what it takes to go on full kit, 212 miles, 15 mile a day over some tough terrain, but 14 days out in the wilderness. Pure bliss to us, absolutely pure bliss. It's got to be tough, it's got to be challenging, but it's got to be fun as well. Just so looking forward to it. Sometimes we'll go on live. If you've enjoyed this video, it just gives you our planned route of the Southern Upland Way, 15 miles a day. Catch you later.